and counting. Have you gotten your copy yet? A very special show on tap for tonight. Counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway, is here live. Katrina Pearson from the Trump re-election campaign. And later, the host of Tucker Carlson tonight, Tucker Carlson himself. Also on deck, an exclusive tour of Liberty University with the president of the groundbreaking college, Jerry Falwell Jr., a tour you won't want to miss. But first, my opening statement. The military needs to be deployed to our southern border immediately to stop the caravan of thousands of illegals pouring into our nation. Right now is a very dangerous time for Americans. Border control is essential to your safety and the safety of your family. The military, the National Guard, ICE, Border Patrol, and DHS needs to block this caravan from entering our nation. Now, I'm not saying they're all criminals. What I am asking is, who are they? What I am saying is, I want to vet them, screen them. I want to find out who among them is a criminal, who among them is a gang member, like the notorious MS-13 gang members who arrogantly rode into our United States by invitation during the Obama years and are now in New York and elsewhere brutally and savagely murdering innocent American citizens. I want to know who is a pedophile, who is a sex offender, who thinks they're entitled to beat their wives. I want to know who has an alcohol problem, who has a drug problem, who likes to drive drunk, and who has no problem. rights as they carry the flags, not of America, but the flags of their country. And God forbid we try to deport them to the country whose flag they so proudly wave. They have no claim on this country. They are not entitled to be here. They break our laws to come here. Now, this is not a left or right issue. This is a security issue, a safety issue. We simply cannot have people about whom we know nothing living next door to us, working next to us, or driving next to us. Crossers claim they're running from violence in their home countries. I spent my career fighting on behalf of innocent, helpless, silent victims of crime, victimized by violence, criminals who should have been stopped long before the crime. You're telling me you're telling me because they're being victimized that every one of them is a victim and therefore entitled to come here as opposed to anywhere else on the planet? Go to the UN, stay in Mexico. Now they say their poverty is justification for illegal entry. I've got news for you. Millions are suffering from poverty all over the world. Hey, Uganda, Zimbabwe, the Congo, third world countries. So why is it just Central Americans and Mexicans are the poverty-stricken ones pouring into this country by the millions? Why? Why? Because they can. Because no one has told them they can't. Because no one has stopped them. They come because there's a big prize at the end. Education, medication, housing, food stamps, all the things that you pay for. So you want open borders. Look at what it's done to Europe. If the left, the mob, and the demon rats had their way, there'd be rogue cities and rogue zones all over the U.S., just like Europe, with crime-ridden zones where law-abiding citizens, even law enforcement, are afraid to enter, and for good reason.
The left, then, the Democrats in this country, add an additional layer of protection so illegal criminals cannot be arrested in sanctuary cities and states where American citizens are thus put at risk. These people don't want a border wall. Have you ever asked yourself why? Do you really think they have a philosophical or an ideological objection to the concept of a wall or protection? Of course not. All these bozos are protected by doors and fences and security, yet they want our borders open. They want illegals to cross as a mob and act as a mob and unite around a state they have no right to be in and register and vote Democrat. Many bring the poison, drugs that take the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans, a primer. 90% of heroin used in this country comes through the southern border. And Mexico thumbs its nose at us and says, your people asked for it. I got an idea. It's time to play hardball. The foreign aid to those countries, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, some $464 million in foreign aid from us, end it. Congress needs to stop the flow of our money to them. And if they need it so badly, use it to take care of the poverty and the victimization in their country. And I am sick and tired of people telling us to have a heart. We have a heart. We are the most generous country in the world. In 1986, Ronald Reagan gave all illegals amnesty. But amnesty does nothing but create an incentive for additional crossings by illegals. And so, here we are again. And for all of you who want to trash President Trump, I've got even more news for you. Presidents Bush and Obama sent the military to the border to the tune of $1.3 billion. And it's time to do it again. So let me be clear. When you cross the border into these United States illegally, expect to be arrested. You do not have the right to come here. We did not invite you here. You cannot stay here. And on your way out, you can tell the Democrats, George Soros, and the angry mob that's coming here, you either come the right way like everyone else or be ready to face the military and a one-way ticket back to where you came from. And that's my open. Don't forget, my book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy, has been calling, has been on the New York Times bestsellers list for three months and counting. And, and believe it, it's got to be killing them at the New York Times. And President Trump tackled the issue of immigration and the caravan in Guatemala while, making, while taking on the Democrats at a raucous rally in Nevada today. Take a look. The Democrat Party, and it's openly inviting millions of illegal aliens to break our laws, violate our borders, and overwhelm our nation. The Democrats want caravans. They like the caravans. A lot of people say, I wonder who started that caravan. And I want to thank Mexico. Mexico has been so incredible. Thank you, Mexico, and the leaders of Mexico. Thank you. And you know why? Because now Mexico respects the leadership of the United States. They haven't done this. They now respect our leadership. Thank you, Mexico. Great. We appreciate it. We do. But what they want is, we are, and by the way, the wall, the people scream. So we started the wall. It's moving along. I want to build it rapidly. I can do it in a year. We did 1.6 billion, 1.6 billion. We have another 1.6, sounds like a lot of money. When you're going for almost a thousand miles, it's not that much, but the wall is moving. I want to do it in one year. I want them to approve the wall. And joining me now with more on this developing story and some other topics making news, Councilor President Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, thanks for being here today. You know, um, 
it's interesting. The president just then suggested that, you know, there might be more behind this uh, and this sudden caravan right before the midterms. I must tell you, uh, it seems to have happened all of a sudden. I mean, I haven't heard about a caravan since Obama invited them in 2014 and 15. What do you think is the genesis of this sudden movement toward the U.S. border? Well, Judge, whatever the genesis, it's so great that the cameras and the Klieg lights are on because I'm always a fan of just showing America what is really happening, not just what is being what is being curated through some of the reports and cherry picked through some of the reports, but just shine a light, bring the cameras. And now people can see what it really means before they saw what they called the kids in cages, which of yeah. course turned out many of them to be President Obama's kids in cages. Yeah. But let them see what's actually happening and let them juxtapose that with a president who is saying, in light of the modernized revolutionary trade deal, the USMCA, Mexi Mexican Canadian American trade deal, that we have better relationships with Mexico now. They respect this president and commander in chief, and well, they are they helping this, now. Yeah, Kellyanne, if they respect this president and commander in chief, uh, and, and I believe you, and I believe the president, um, I should be comfortable believing that Mexico is going to stop them before they come through the United States. Well, they ought to do that because I'll tell you, if you look statistically, Janine, and I want everyone to know that until very recently, the predominant trafficker, predominant person coming over the border was a single male, one male person coming in from Mexico. Now, 45% or so are family units are coming in, unaccompanied minors or people who say they're a family coming in from Central America. This is a problem because we are encouraging people to smuggle children over and pretend they are a family unit. Right, There's no right. way for Coyotes. folks to know instantly at the border. And, and by the way, and I, I, I talked to a number of cabinet secretaries and other senior officials this week. Don't forget, our brave men and women at the border are doing the best that they can. And they risk their lives every single day to be there and ask legitimate questions. Uh, if you want to come through one of the 26 ports of entry, if you want to stand in line and immigrate into the world's most generous country to Im immigrants, you can do that. We're talking about the, the, the sexual assaults are up now. The child smuggling is up. Right. The drug smuggling is up. Let's, and let's, all of this because we don't have, a, we're a sovereign nation without physical borders. And this president right, ran Kelly, and, and I won on exactly about that the issue. as it relates to the heroin crossing the border, how our southern borders are used by the cartel as a point of entry, uh, that, that poison that is killing uh, hundreds of thousands of Americans, a, a thousand a week minimum. That's right. There's no doubt. Uh, this president has had as a major focus stopping the drug supply and drug demand crisis that is roiling this nation. 72,000 Americans dead last year. 90% right. or so of all heroin in this country comes through the southern border. Obviously, the cocaine comes through the southern border. And now, increasingly, the fentanyl that is manufactured in the labs in China, we are told, is also coming through the southern border because everybody knows it's an easy way to get in. And, and so this is very problematic because um, this president, and many people don't focus on this, he's constantly talking about the poison coming over the southern border, that it's coming to your community. And this opioid and drug crisis is no longer somebody else's kid, somebody else's co-worker, yeah. somebody else's community. Oh, it's real It's now. touching every nook and cranny in this country. Well, there's no question about that. I, I want to move to something that's in the news right now, and that is the uh, uh, Khashoggi. The president seems to have indicated that um, uh, he, he believes that the explanation from Khashoggi's death uh, given by the Saudis, but there seems to be evidence of, of his being tortured and chokehold, uh, that it wasn't just a fight, it was a planned execution with bone saws, et cetera. We, I have no information to verify any of that. I'm going to stand by the comments that the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, the President, have made that these investigations are ongoing. The President has made clear that there seems no other explanation other than that the gentleman is dead. And I can't get ahead of the completion of any other investigation. It's very disappointing to see a major network 
uh, run a completely false report that our own Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, and our president said was completely false and, and fantastical, that somehow the Secretary of State heard uh, an audio tape and or read a transcript from yeah. sa said audio tape. Uh, they went with a false report, and it's that kind of reporting that really hurts investigations and the conclusion of information, but I'm not going to get ahead of that. Okay, all right, and that it's that kind of false reporting that Americans believed is going on, which is why they elected the outsider president. Kelly well, I Conway. think it's why, look, I, that's right, it's, and, and, and that's also why the media has a 20% approval rating. And look, the president has said, if in fact this happened, then there could be severe consequences. Of course. The Vice President Kelly and Conway, that. thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thanks, Janine. All right. Katrina Pearson making a surprise appearance on Justice to take on Chris Hahn. That's ahead. You don't want to miss it. And next, she's back. Hillary Clinton's name comes up in federal court as new details emerge in her myriad of scandals dating back to her time as Secretary of State. Here to talk about that as well as whether the Mueller investigation may be mercifully uh, brought to an end is Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch. Justice rolls on in a moment. The, not just how they granted immunity to the uh, Hillary people in that email investigation, but for providing false statements on the Clinton email case. Now, uh, several, two years ago, I said all of these State Department lawyers should be brought up on contempt or fraud before the court. What do you think should happen? Well, at least they should be required to ask more questions. <laughs> they should stop obstructing, stop obstructing our requests for information. You know, the federal court judge already granted us discovery because he had been gamed. He thought there was bad faith in the way, obviously, the State Department had behaved in a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit about Benghazi, no less. Right. And, of course, they were hiding their Clinton emails from us. They didn't tell the court or Judicial Watch forthrightly about what was going on. And that's why the court entered, <laughs> came in uh, not too long ago and said, look, I had false statements given to me. I don't know about these false affidavits that were given to me. I'm interested to know what the Justice Department knew, what and when. Okay. And I I'm surprised that Cheryl Mills, Hillary Clinton's top aide, was given immunity when I found that she had committed perjury and I couldn't believe her in another case about emails that Judicial Watch had pursued. Okay, uh, and so, so the State the Department's judge... fighting. The, the State Department is fighting us on this, which is most troubling. Well, yeah, and the State Department, as well as the Department of Justice, said uh, at the beginning of the Trump administration that Hillary Clinton was a private citizen, and therefore her record shouldn't be available uh, to the public as freedom of information. I mean, this, the deep state is so deep, I don't even know where it stops or starts. But, but, but having said all that, doesn't the judge have the right to hold these lawyers in contempt? Well, you'll see that's potentially the relief that may be granted over after we get some of the questions we still have pending with the State Department. We're asking, for instance, this judge to allow us to depose Hillary Clinton directly, ask her questions directly about her email practices. And um, he's considering it still. Cheryl Mills what's, also what's another the topic. What's likelihood that that's going to happen, Tom? I think it's a significant likelihood. We've okay. already questioned her under oath in written questions. We're fighting her in another court about getting more uh, questions answered. So okay. discovery for Hillary Clinton is a real possibility. All right. I, I want to move on to something else. Uh, you said that it's time uh, to bring Mueller in to testify before Congress. Uh, are you talking about oversight uh, in their oversight capacity or the judiciary? Who? Well, you could have the, the Oversight Committee, you could have Judiciary Committees of both the Senate and the House question him about the administration of his investigation, the circumstances of his hiring. We have Rosenstein. So, uh, so what's it going to take? Have you spoken to any Congress people about this, Tom? Oh, no, they don't want to do this. Why? They don't want to do this. Why? I, I, I've been struck by the fact that Mueller has been exempted from oversight. The only government official in, in the Trump administration who they don't want to talk to. Look at all the folks they want to bring in as witnesses. Uh, McCabe, Strzok, Rosenstein. Uh, but they don't want to talk to the guy who seems to be running the Justice Department on the Russia investigations, uh, Bob Mueller. Right. You know, and and, and frankly, looking the other way when he finds out that there's criminal activity uh, on the left. 
outrageous. Man, maybe the deep state goes into Congress, too. Who knows? That's right. It's well represented in Congress. There's a deep state caucus there, believe you me. Sad commentary. Tom Fitton, thanks so much. You're welcome. All right, so ahead tonight, I take you on an exclusive to Liberty University in Virginia for a tour given by none other than the groundbreaking school's president, Jerry Falwell Jr. And next, the marquee matchup of the night. Katrina Pearson, Chris Hahn, the political panel, chomping at the bit to debate the week in Washington. Don't go away. Back in a moment. are still at large. Officer Anton Tony of the Gwinnett County Police Department was shot around 3 p.m. He was responding to reports of a suspicious vehicle at a middle school near Snellville, Georgia. Tony, a two-year veteran of the force, later died at the hospital. Witnesses say as many as four suspects fled the scene. And with no winner in last night's Mega Millions lottery drawing, the jackpot grows to a record-breaking $1.6 billion. This is the largest jackpot in history, just barely edging out the previous record set in January of 2016. The massive jackpot bringing many first-time players to the lottery. The odds of winning are about 1 in 302 million. I'm Anita Vogel. Now let's take you back to justice with Judge Janine. You can see chaos at the Guatemala-Mexico border and immigration taking center stage in the national debate again, just in time for the midterm elections. Just one of the topics we talk about with the panel, uh, syndicated radio show host Chris Hahn making a special appearance on Justice Tonight, senior advisor to Trump 2020 re-election, Katrina Pearson. All right, guys, um, you uh, are familiar with the uh, mob of illegal immigrants, illegal aliens, uh, pushing through from Guatemala to Mexico against police and uh, enforcement. And what we saw in, that, in those few seconds were virtually all men. Tell me, Chris, why these people should be allowed to enter in a mob of thousands into the United States. Look, I am for controlled borders, as are most people on the left in this country. I think that the president had an opportunity last year when Schumer and Pelosi offered him DACA for the wall. And then he was talked out of it by McConnell and Ryan because they wanted this exact issue for this exact moment. They are more concerned about the election than solving the actual okay. problem. So they your answer to security. these, they listen, the Chris, wall. your answer to these illegals crossing and violently crossing, resisting law enforcement, all men, is because they're concerned about the Trump, uh, Schumer, uh, Mitch McConnell fight. No. No, so no, 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 no. I'm saying that the reason the why, the reason why, here. of course not, unless they are, are seeking asylum legitimately or, or there's a reason for them to be here and everybody agrees with that. They need to come here legally and there needs to be a process. And there was goodwill on, by both the president, Leader Pelosi and I Leader Schumer, but politics. Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan blocked it. I don't want to talk politics tonight, Chris. I want to talk about this mob. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Katrina. Look, look, Judge, uh, it was President Trump who nearly doubled uh, the recipients he was willing to accept over Obama, but that's neither here nor there. And this really isn't just any mob. This is a column on the march carrying their own flag. This is an invasion. And I have to applaud the Mexican government for at least appearing to want to help with this situation, but let's not pretend this is organic. We're talking about men, thousands of men, only scattered with women and children for protection, who are actually marching across the border. This is another leftist funded operation fully flagged with several oh, innocent stop. victims, photo ready outrage designed to pull on the heartstrings of Americans, complete emotional attachment only to distract from the rational analysis behind this. This is no more organic than Dr. Ford coming out in the 25th hour no. to, tr to I, try I mean, and have the left capitalize <laughs> on getting rid of due process Katrina. in this country. This Go is a $35 Chris, million Scott, dollar you project. Katrina, if Chris. you want to talk about, if you want to go down the conspiracy theory hole about this, there is no 
no way that Democrats in this country would have organized this at this point in, in, in the midterm election. This is perfectly pitched for the Republican base right now. This is exactly so, what so you needed at this time to energize it. So you're going to tell me, so you're going to tell me, Chris, that people well, no, who well, are Well, no, Katrina is suggesting that this is poverty, some conspiracy. I want to know what you know about the conspiracy, $7, Katrina. It $7,000 per head to bring these people. $7,000 per head yeah. to have these traffickers move these people throughout the, the southern uh, hemisphere. Yeah. That is well, $35 Katrina, million. You're talking about, How can impoverished you're talking people about a do conspiracy. this? You're talking about a conspiracy for, from basically what you said was Democrats organized this in Guatemala. Somebody you are organized so it. Far Listen, lost Chris, on this. Just American Democrats, leftists. All right, let me ask you got this, it, Chris. Got it. Should, I, should they be stopped by the military at the border and turned around and that whole mob, and unfortunately the mob thing seems to be a, 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 a favorite of the left, uh, shouldn't they be turned around immediately? Huh. I don't even look at them. They're all men, all men. They just decide at I, some point they want to come to the United States all of a sudden, as opposed to last month, the month before, I, the month before. I, I think all Americans believe in a secure border, and I think there needs to be order at that border, and I think that the president was offered order at the border by Don't Democrats, and he rejected it because he wanted Trump. because the this Republicans wanted this issue Donald at this Trump. time. He offered 1.8 million Dreamers citizenship. Well, I believe in crap, order at Chris. the border, and but I will tell Americans. you, there has been less order ahead, at the border Katrina, under, under this ahead. president than there was all before. All Americans clearly are not in support of secure borders because we have a Democrat party in the United States that supports sanctuary cities. You can't have a secure border and sanctuary cities. That's kind of not how it works, Chris. We have to resolve there's the no issue. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck cities. Schumer oh, had the no, perfect no opportunity to resolve it. And what they refused. What there Chris. is is people, what there is, what there is is different times when people ask for documentation. What Katrina would have Are to do is for mind, police to Chris? walk up Don't to people they suspect as being illegal and say, no papers, such thing please, as sanctuary. Chris, papers, Chris, please. Stop That's talking. what you want, Katrina. You're not going to come here and spin lies. There are sanctuary cities, counties, and states in this country where illegal criminals are provided more protection than American citizens. And don't you come no, on this show and say that that's ask. not the case. That's it. Goodbye. Look, any American, that, has, any American that runs into the law is asked for identification. These people, Gotta not so go. much. That is sanctuary, Chris. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Jerry Falwell Jr. and Tucker Carlson still on deck. Don't miss it. We're going at that one. Host of Tucker Carlson tonight. And this week, I sat down with Tucker to talk about his new book, my mother's favorite, Ship of Fools. Take a look. All right, Tucker Carlson, congratulations on the book. Well, thank I would you. buy it, if only for the cover. You have Republicans and Democrats and possibly lunatics, some people who should be in jail, who aren't in jail, some people who are headed for jail. Let me ask you this. <laughs> Do you expect any of these people in the Ship of Fools to ever come on your show were you to ask them? Well, one of them has already refused, but no, I don't. And, and actually, <laughs> I know a lot of those people. I know almost all of them, having been in D.C. my whole life. Yeah. And it's not a personal attack. I mean, it's pretty easy to attack. No, you personally. call them fools. Of course, it's a personal. Well, I'm attack. attacking their decisions, and I'm attacking more than that. Yeah, well, then you should put their decisions, not their face. No, on. but that's look. The whole interior of the book, between the cover and the back cover, <laughs> is an explanation that it's not. Of look, what? I know it's very fashionable to attack people's behavior in high school now. Yeah. But I actually, don't believe in that. I think you should assess people's adult decisions. Why are you covering up for what you did in high school? Yes, cover? I am. Okay. I am. All not right. that I remember any of it. <laughs> I have no calendar. <laughs> but let me just say, it's not that people make mistakes. I've made a million. I worked at MSNBC, okay? So I've made mistakes. The question is, do you admit it and do you learn from it? And what I'm so struck by, the reason Trump got elected is because the people who made a series of terrible decisions about our economy, our foreign policy, our culture, never admitted it and never learned. Okay, but I agree with you. Donald Trump is the president because Barack Obama was the guy before him. Exactly. And people are fed up. They said no more of this. But, but what I want to talk about is you say that we're headed toward, or at least at the brink of a revolution. Yes. I agree with you. I think we're at the point where the liberals are proud and they can 
consider it a badge of honor when they uh, obstruct, when they get in our faces, when they harass and, uh, you know, just harass us. I completely agree. But what's driving all this volatility? It's not everyone wants to make everything a race question. Oh, it's this tribe against this tribe. I don't believe that. I think our core problems are economic problems. The middle class was the majority for 100 years. Now it's the minority. People are getting poorer outside of the big cities, and the big cities don't care. Young people are getting poorer. They can't get married, buy cars, buy houses. Right. People know their kids will make less and be less successful and have less opportunity than they do. And whose fault is that? And to whom should that, you know, the fact that that happened benefit? The people I write about are the answer to the question you just asked. A small group of people is way richer. And I live among them. I'm, by the way, richer than I was 10 years ago after the financial crash. Right. But the rest of the country is not. And if you're running the country, its major institutions, including its big banks and its big companies like Amazon, including its cultural institutions like NBC, you need to pay attention to what's happening to the people in your country. If you want to lead, you need to care about the people you're leading. And they don't. All right. So so in the end, which is the party that's going to help get us through this this attempted socialism? Because, you know, they're winning. They're winning around the country. They're getting elected. Bernie Sanders was an avowed socialist. He almost ran for president. But for the rigged DNC and Hillary Clinton, that 43 percent, he might have won that. And a lot of people who voted for Bernie in the primaries voted for Trump because both of them were talking not about race and gender and all this boring college garbage. Right. They're talking about core economic things like, by the way, what are wages doing? Mm-hmm. Our immigration policy hurts working class people. There's no debate about that. And Without you, you never doubt. hear it. It's all about race. All right. Racist. And everybody loves you because you tell it straight. I love you. I watch your uh, uh, your opening statements. What do you call them? I call them opens. What do you call oh, them? Just the script. Just the script. Okay. I'm very Back literal. To the book. Back to the book. <laughs> Listen, what I love is um, Kopechny. You talk about Mary Jo Kopechny. And you say divers estimated she had survived for several hours in the Oldsmobile or head in an air pocket until she finally saw suffocated from lack of oxygen. But then you go right to your point, which is it doesn't matter. The feminists still love Ted Kennedy. Well, that's the point. And by the way, I just want to be really clear. I believe in forgiveness. I'm the last person who does. If Ted Kennedy had said, you know, what? I did that. It was cowardly. I was drunk. I don't want to get arrested for it. I made a horrible decision. A woman died and I'm sorry. I would be the first person to say, I believe in that. I'd be friends with Idi Amin if he repented. I don't believe in this no forgiveness thing that we're now all into. Yeah, but here's the thing. He never apologized. He lied he about it. apologizing. He got away with a homicide. It's called criminally negligent homicide. He was a hero to the feminists. He the was man a hero. who killed a woman. Right. And lied about it is a feminist hero. What does that tell you about their That's priorities? What I'm asking you. Women are not their priorities. Obviously. Why would you make a guy who killed a woman your hero? If you're a feminist, what does that mean? OK, I have to go. It's the end of the segment. Well, it's well, so I nice to see you. Thank you, you for, for having being me. Justice. Ah. Ah. It was just. <laughs> Next, a special treat, a first-hand look at Liberty University and a guided tour from its president, Jerry Falwell Jr. Next. Morning. Welcome to Mitsubishi. Liberty University is a -a one-of-a-kind school in Lynchburg, Virginia. It's a nonprofit Christian university where both students and faculty practice what they preach. I had the pleasure to visit recently and got a first-hand tour from its president, Jerry Falwell, Jr. Here I am at Liberty University with the president of the university, Jerry Falwell. How is it that this university in particular is able to get so many students who were so Christian oriented, constitution oriented, who believe in this country and are so energized by this, uh, what's going on? Well, I call Liberty the Fox News Network of the academic world. Liberty is different than other universities in so many ways. The Chronicle of Higher Education did a cover story a few years ago that said that The success of Liberty University is rooted in the fact that Liberty doesn't try to be like every other university. We try to emphasize academic freedom, freedom of expression. We try to keep education affordable and accessible. Let's walk a little bit. What what is this right here, this tower that's in front of us? The tower is the uh, School of Divinity. It's 275 feet high, which is nearly 28 stories. There's a classroom on every floor. Under the, under the lawn right there, under the lawn. there's three basketball courts where the basketball team practices. Those are the newer dorms up there on the hill. A um, lot of new construction going on still. 
Let's talk about the young kids here, the students here, yep. who are, they are so different from their you know, cohorts in, well, in universities. Visitors to campus are always telling me how they go out of their way to ask them if they need directions. They they drop something, the students will pick it up for them. A lot of universities, you walk on campus and the students won't make eye contact with them. Right. Adult. What is the role? Let's let's get a little more political. I mean, with the midterms coming up, mm -hmm. what's the role of the uh, evangelical Christian? Having seen everything that we saw with the uh, Kavanaugh hearings mm -hmm. and uh, you know, what role do they play and can they turn elections in this country? Well, when, when President Trump said to African Americans, what the hell do you have to lose? We took that as that he was talking to evangelicals as well because establishment Republicans have betrayed us for decades. And so a lot of us voted for Trump because what do we have to lose? Do you think, though, that after the, the Kavanaugh hearings and, mm -hmm. and the, the, the sharp divide in this country, mm -hmm. that's going to bring out the evangelicals? Absolutely. I think they're angry about how he, how he was treated. And I've heard that from a lot just the last couple of days. And I just... Uh, I think that anger is going to backfire on the Democrats. <laughs> so this is Virginia Rose, and she's going to come. She's to my only you? grandbaby. She's seven months, so seven months old. Got one more on the way, but this is the only one we have so so far. And she'll be a student here. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it'll be up to her, but yeah. with with the midterms mm -hmm. coming up, do you think that those on the left uh, are? not just out of control, but they are interested in something different than the students here? I just think the country's never been more polarized. I remember when I was in law school in the 80s, I would travel with my father when he spoke at different mainstream universities, liberal Reverend. schools. They would boo and hiss because he was a conservative, but they weren't like they are now. Now, they, you know, in those days, liberals would say, I may not agree with you, but I'll fight for your right to say it. Mm -hmm. Now they don't want you to say it. They become fascists instead of liberals. I, in my opinion. What, so what has happened to the country? You know, I, I think it's years and years of education in the public schools that are controlled by the teachers unions and then higher education that is just all the professors believe a certain way. I forget how many, 98 percent supported Obama at the Ivy League schools. And it's just, they've just been indoctrinated, young people. Then what can Liberty do to change that? That's what we, that's why we exist. And it's why we've prospered is because it's an alternative to that indoctrination and that lack of um, academic freedom, lack of free expression. You know, conservatives are bullied at most mainstream yeah, universities. Yeah, I know. And you're about to hear from the students at Liberty. Street Justice is next. School now here from the students. I hit the campus of Liberty University for this week's Street Justice. Here I am at the campus of Liberty University, and as you can see, many of these students are so bright because they are holding up my book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals. I'm going to go around and ask them how much religion affects their politics and how much they love Liberty University. Yeah. So, what a shock. Here I am on Liberty. I just found someone who has my book. Okay, let's talk about politics and religion. Okay. Where does where does politics, uh, how is politics affected by your religion? My politics are affected by my religion um, because God drives everything that I do. Um, I'm actually a pre-law major. You actually really have inspired me to oh, pick my field. Yeah. You um, want to be a prosecutor? Yeah, I would. Yeah. Mr. 6'5", do you play basketball? Uh, I, didn't, I did in high school. I'm doing intramural here, though. What do you want to be? Uh, if anything, you know, I'm not totally sure yet. I'm, I'm a digital media major. Maybe a broadcaster going along those lines. Yeah? Well, if you're going to be a broadcaster, you got to get a taller cameraman. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Sorry, Greg! All right. How does religion affect your politics? Well, as a Christian, I always like to, you know, vote more conservative and always put Jesus at my forefront Wait a minute. Wait, vote more conservative. Does that yes. mean the conservatives are more religious than the, uh, the liberals? I feel like they're more of a Christian fan base. Do you think okay. the people on the on the right fight the way they should? The people on the right the way. Yeah. In yeah. other words, are people on the right too wimpy? Um, I don't think so, considering Donald Trump's in office. I mean, Donald Trump's been a forefront of that. 
I mean, look at him. He's tweeting up a storm. Yeah, you're a smart guy. So religion affects my politics for sure, but it affects everything else too. I'm actually registered Democrat, and so it's a lot different for me where everybody else is a lot more conservative. But your Democrat friends, are they as tolerant as you are? No, they are not. And I well, think what does that tell you? Why are you still a Democrat? With a show of hands, how many of you are going to vote Republican in the midterms? Yeah. Okay. Now, put them down. How many of you are going to vote Democrat in the midterms? Are you not voting at all? I've been watching you. How many of you love this school as much as I do? You know what, folks? That says a lot. Thank you. God bless you all. Says Finally, tonight, it's been three months and counting, and my book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, is still sitting pretty on the New York Times bestsellers list. So you better go out and get your copy before you're the last person you know who doesn't have one. And tune in to Wise Guys tomorrow night right here on Fox News at 8 p.m. Eastern, where I'll be a guest. I'm Janine Pirro, advocating for truth, justice, and the American way. The Greg Gutfeld Show is coming up next. See you next Saturday night. Same place. Play same time, same me. The Democrat.